Soccer, the fastest growing sport in the United States, and it's here in Deltona. Soccer, it's one of the fastest growing sports in the United States and it's here in Deltona. Hello, my name is Lee Lopez. I'm with the city of Deltona and this is Turf Courts and Celebrations. My guest with me today is Charlie Vance with the Ad Deltona Adult Soccer League. And Charlie, with soccer in the United States and soccer in Deltona, there's a history. Uh, tell me about soccer here in Deltona. All right, thanks for having me. You know, soccer in Deltona started in 1981. Mm -hmm when a group of individuals got together and started the Deltona Youth Soccer Club. And of course, it's still in existence today. Mm -hmm. Members have changed over the years. Uh, a couple of former presidents and staff workers that were mm -hmm. with the youth club, all of our kids got too old to play youth soccer, so we started an adult soccer league 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. So now we're into our 30th season mm -hmm. this summer. And every year it's grown, just like the youth have. Mm -hmm. You know, back when we became a city, we built one of the biggest and nicest soccer parks in Volusia County. And now there's too many people and not enough fields again <laughs> yeah. to play. So. Now, with the number of people and the different leagues, because there are different levels of competition, correct? With, uh, because this is recreational soccer. So give me uh, the lowdown on how the league is broken down, the different divisions. Okay, for the adult league, we run every season January February and June and July we run a men's division on Monday nights mm -hmm. a co-ed division on Tuesday nights which is 18 and up both groups mm -hmm. and then on Wednesday nights we run an over 30 division of mm -hmm. course they can have a couple players that are 28 or 29 yeah uh, to play on the team they have mm -hmm. 10 members on a team and we play six aside it's not like your normal soccer mm -hmm. it actually started out 20 30 years ago as a training mechanism to teach kids how to mm -hmm. play inside the 18-yard box. Okay. Use their skills mm -hmm. to control the ball, pass the ball, and score. Now it's basically mm -hmm. we turned it into a regular soccer game. We play two 25-minute halves, and everybody enjoys the game of soccer. Mm -hmm. It's not World Cup. Yeah. Of course, some players get out there and think it is. Mm -hmm. uh, usually we have two divisions every night also in each of the divisions, men's, co-ed, and mm -hmm. over 30. So we have an A division and a B division. And the A division is your more experienced and players have been playing since high school, college, yeah. and on. And they want to keep themselves in shape mm -hmm. during the summer because there is no other soccer during the summer in Central Florida. Uh, unless you go somewhere else. Yeah. North Florida, South mm -hmm. Florida. Now, you, you, you said six aside. So that's like each team has six people as opposed to professional soccer that has 11 aside mm -hmm. your goalkeeper and 10 out on the field so six aside is a goalkeeper and five players on the field mm -hmm. it's harder to get uh, 11 aside teams yeah. together mm -hmm. because then you have to have a substitution so you want to get 15 or 16 people okay and one individual doesn't know that many people to play recreation yeah. uh, Mm -hmm. And a lot of people arrive here in Deltona and surrounding areas uh, from Canada, mm -hmm. uh, New York. Uh, I don't know where to play, where to go, who yeah. to see, and I don't know anybody, mm -hmm. so I want to join a team. So we create house teams in all of our divisions okay. uh, for individuals like that. And mm -hmm. we create teams every year, every season. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have to create two in a division because yeah. so many individuals come that don't know anybody. And, and then... Besides filling up house mm -hmm. teams, we use the same people that uh, if another team that's been playing with us a while says, oh, Charlie, Bill, and John are gone this season. We need a couple players. Mm -hmm. And so well, some of our house people will move over to a regular team. So they start meeting new people in the area, mm -hmm. and then they come back. Uh, we have okay. people in every walk of life. Yeah. Just like if you go to the beach, you run into mm -hmm. everybody in soccer. You run into everybody that does every kind of profession. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot of interactive, it's, it's like being a part of another family, soccer yeah. is. As the kids grow up mm -hmm. through youth, they start playing adult, 
Okay. So they have a lot of fun, meet a lot of people. Now, the different divisions, you said, okay, there is the, I guess, the regular men's division. And, and the men's then, division mm -hmm. is mostly our 18 years old and, and up. Uh -huh. That's where the most of the kids right out of high school. Okay. Uh, some may still be in high school and they've mm -hmm. already turned 18. Yeah. Uh, they can play. The college kids coming back for the summer. This is where they can play and stay in shape. They may be playing college soccer. Mm -hmm. uh, the co-ed on Tuesday nights is the same. Mm -hmm. And then they're playing with their girlfriends, wives. Yeah. Uh, brothers and sisters. We even have families playing. Their dad, their mom will play with their kids. Mm -hmm. And uh, we even have girls will play on our men's Monday okay. nights because okay. their sister wants to play. Yeah. And they can't make co ed night for work or school mm -hmm. purposes because some of these kids are doing college over the summer. So, but our schedule never changes. So they know if they're going to play uh, mm -hmm. co ed soccer, it's always on a Tuesday. It's never changed in 15 years. Okay. Uh, same with the men's open. Mm -hmm. It's always on Monday nights. And people ask me that all the time. Well, can a girl play? Yes, a girl can mm -hmm. play. And uh, the over 30 is on Wednesdays, mm -hmm. the same thing. And over 40 divisions, mm -hmm. they know it's going to be every Wednesday night. Mm -hmm. The only thing they don't know is when the season starts, how many teams there's going to be and what yeah. time of the game. Seven, eight, nine o'clock is usually mm -hmm. all the games. And we try to accommodate everybody if a team is coming uh, from Ormond Beach or a few people, mm -hmm. you know, most of the team may be from here, but they yeah. got two friends in Ormond Beach that are mm -hmm. going to come. Can you make our games at, at eight and nine? Mm -hmm. And we try to accommodate people. So they don't have, people who are playing on, in the leagues here, they don't have to live in Deltona. They can live pretty much anywhere as long as they're, they're willing to make the drive here and go to the games. Correct. Now, Correct. for the adult open and co-ed, uh, minimum age is 18, right? Correct. And then with the over 30, I mean, that's kind of obvious. You know, it's pretty much going to be limited to people who are older than 30. Over than, older than 30, now, except yeah. for we allow, like I said, there's mm -hmm. 10 on a team, so there's six players on the field, so everybody has four substitutions. Mm -hmm. We allow the goalkeeper to be as young as 25. Okay. Because when you get a lot older, you're not going to be bending over and diving yeah. for the ball inside the six-yard mm -hmm. box and all. So mm -hmm. we allow that. But that player can't come way out on the field and play. He right. has to maintain an area of a third of the field. Now, is the over 30, is that also open to if women want to play in, in the over 30, or is it pretty much a, like just restricted? Yes, it is. The okay. women can play in over 30. It, mm -hmm. Again, it's all in, in the statistics and how many people you know and if mm -hmm. you can get enough women together. Yeah. Uh, older women don't play a lot in their 30s or 40s, mm -hmm. but we've had a few for years play with the men's team. I have mm -hmm. one lady. Uh, she had a, a co-ed team, and she wanted to play two nights, so she created an over-30 team. Okay. And uh, that's why we, out of the 10, we allow two players mm -hmm. to be 28 or 29 because we'll have a brother come that's 31, and his younger brother is 28 or 29, yeah. and they want to play together. So that's why we have that mm -hmm. little rule. I like watching soccer, but I really don't understand a lot of the game rules. All righty. Uh, so I'm going to turn to you as my soccer professional, my subject matter expert. <laughs> How, it, okay, what are the basics? You know, if I'm watching a, a, a professional match, right? what am I looking for? Because I see red cards, I see yellow cards, penalty kicks. You know, how do, if you well, can give me a primer. Well, start with uh, referees. Okay. It's basically your policeman on the field. Okay. Just like in... Basketball or hockey, let's mm -hmm. equate. A lot of people know basketball and hockey. Yeah. It's the same mm -hmm. concept. You're trying to get the ball. One team is trying to get the ball in the net at the other end, mm -hmm. whether it's in the air or on the ground. Right. Uh, we have bigger goal nets in soccer, mm -hmm. and so you can kick the ball further. Handling the ball, you don't do with your hands. Right. Other than throwing the ball in if it goes out of bounds. Mm -hmm. The referee tries to keep the game going. Fouls normally... A uh, yellow card is issued to somebody that may have more than casual contact. Of course, it's a contact sport. If mm -hmm. you're going shoulder to shoulder with somebody and fighting for the ball, that's legal. You go raising your elbow up and push them away, that's illegal, just like yeah. basketball. Okay, so that makes sense. If you knock somebody off the ball, or even if you're not at the ball and you intentionally push somebody mm -hmm. away, unsportsmanlike conduct. Yeah. A player is going to get a yellow card. Okay. It's a referee's discretion on how flagrant uh, the priority of the yeah. call. Okay. Was it really intent or accident? Yeah. 
fifty percent or more of the fouls on a soccer field mm -hmm. are people stumbling over themselves. They're yeah. running, you know, twenty miles an hour mm -hmm. and tripping and stumbling. And sometimes even the grass will catch their cleats and trip them, fall. Mm -hmm. You see people fall out there all the way. Nobody was around him. Why? And that's what happens. Yeah, they, their shoe got stuck in the mm -hmm. turf. Mm -hmm. So. The referee will call the foul. You don't see a lot of yellow cards other than if it's an intentional okay. foul. Now, up to red card, there's mm -hmm. five red card variations. I won't go over them, but they're more of a vigorous, injury-hurting foul. You'll see that anybody that tries to get the ball from behind mm -hmm. and kicks another player in the back of their legs mm -hmm. where they have no protection, they have shin guards on the front, right. but not the back. So that's the worst injury. And FIFA's all over that. So you'll mm -hmm. see a lot of yellow cards, and you'll hear the commentators saying, you know, that could have been a red mm -hmm. because uh, people have broken their legs in playing soccer or broken their ankles mm -hmm. uh, from a behind. You don't know what's coming. Somebody's yeah. coming behind you. It's sort of like a rear-end car accident. Mm -hmm. So you're either going to get a yellow or you could get a red card. Uh, you can get a red card being the last defender if a goalkeeper comes way out of their six-yard box or 18-yard mm -hmm. box yeah. where they can handle the ball and comes mm -hmm. out and they're the last defender and fouls a player attacking with the ball and they could get a red card and get ejected from the game. A yellow card mm -hmm. is just your warning. If you get two yellow cards, that equals a red card and you're out of the game. Okay. So, I'm going to say yellow card, not so bad, but red card, that's really prohibitive because, you, like you said, you can get ejected from the game. You get ejected from that game, mostly FIFA rules, even our rules. Mm -hmm. You don't play the next game either oh, okay. if you're so, in a tournament play yeah. or league play. Now, you have forwards that play up front, mm -hmm. and they're supposed to be your good scorers because mm -hmm. they're going to pass the ball to it. You'll have people in midfield. Mm -hmm. uh, or, or midfield and defenders, so they're helping to keep the other team from shooting on your goal. And, of course, then you have your goalkeeper that can handle mm -hmm. the ball because he needs to be able to stop, raise his hands, and stop the ball. And that's basically what's the premise of, of uh, basketball. Mm -hmm. You know, the ball goes out on the other team, and it's your ball to throw back in. Yeah. So you'll throw it back in to your teammate and play, and the object is... Use your feet as your skills mm -hmm. instead of your hands. And yeah. Pass the ball to your teammates mm -hmm. and put it in the net of your opponent. And the time period, uh, professional soccer game, okay, well, the recreational league, like what you're saying, is 225 right. minute. Uh, we play 225 mm -hmm. minute halves because okay. to get, if we have lots of teams, we mm -hmm. want to get all the games played. We don't want to be playing at midnight. Right. Uh, these people have to go to work, and mm -hmm. they got to get the kids in bed. So that's why our latest game starts at 9 o'clock. So mm -hmm. we try to keep it by hourly, mm -hmm. and we don't play 90-minute games. Six aside is more sprinting yeah. and ball skills. You're on a smaller field, 40 yards wide, 60 yards long. Mm -hmm. You're out there just for conditioning. 25-minute mm -hmm. half is plenty of time. You get hot and sweaty, and even in the mm -hmm. evening when the sun goes down, you're going to drink a lot of water. You still get a workout. A regular soccer <laughs> game is mm -hmm. 90 minutes, yeah. 45 mm -hmm. each minute, or each half, and you're playing on a bigger field. You're playing on 120 to 130 yards long, mm -hmm. and 75 to 80 yards wide. Okay. So a soccer field is a lot bigger than a football field, mm -hmm. and in width and depth. Mm -hmm. And finesse with the ball, and the ball skills is good. And you see on a, it's a Women's World Cup. They're yeah. passing the ball further and longer, and you have to have more endurance to last. Mm -hmm. You'll hear the people all the time, the commentators saying, is that player good enough to last 90 minutes? Mm -hmm. uh, the key thing in training kids is not always just to train them the skills on the ball and the rules of the game. You don't want to do intentional fouls. Yeah is also be in condition to mm -hmm. be able to play a whole game. Now, you, uh, the youth groups play, depending on the age, they may mm -hmm. play two 20-minute halves, two 30-minute halves. You start at U8s or mm -hmm. U6s. Five-year-olds can start playing, mm -hmm. work their way up. As they get older in the age groups, the longer the game is. So once you get up to under 13s is mm -hmm. when I say you. Yeah. They're under 13, so they're all 12-year-olds. Mm -hmm. Depending on the birthday, some of them may turn 13 before they're out, and then they'll go to under 14s next year. Then they're going to start playing on bigger fields, mm 
Mm -hmm. Soccer is designed as they grow in age, they start on a smaller field and they the field gets bigger, the goals get bigger mm -hmm. as, they, as get. they get. So older. when you're up to yeah. 16 years old, you're playing on a full size field with full size mm -hmm. goals. Oh, okay. Now, very quickly, what I've heard about the different games or descriptions for games, like, okay, what's. I've heard the term, they played a friendly. So is that like a scrimmage okay. match or you know, some, some yes. of the terminology? A uh, friendly game mm -hmm. is where a major league soccer team will invite a foreign team like uh, Fernese from Brazil mm -hmm. will come up and play Orlando City. It doesn't count in the major league soccer uh, tournament that they, where they play all year and to see mm -hmm. who's going to play for the championship like the Super Bowl in football. Yeah. Uh, they're playing a friendly game. It's a practice game. Mm -hmm. Also, it's international friendly. It's cooperation between countries mm -hmm. and the United States Soccer Federation with the Brazilian Federation. Yeah. And it's basically international mm -hmm. friendship. Okay. And play different teams at their level. Then there's the uh, lower divisions, uh, like most people understand baseball. You yeah. have your major league baseball, mm -hmm. and then all of them have minor league teams where yeah. they practice players, and they may move up as you get ba better. Mm -hmm. And in soccer, you have the same thing. You have major league soccer, and then there's three or four divisions that go down from that. Mm -hmm. But there's also a difference in soccer because there's so many people interested in, in so many more ways to get up to major league soccer. Yeah. You have the United Soccer League. Mm -hmm. It's based out of Tampa. They play all over the United States. So there's regions that are made, so many states, and then there's conferences within that region. The Southern Conference for that is Florida and Georgia. So there's like six teams at the, the pro level. Mm -hmm. uh, then you have the a professional development league, which is yeah. like under 23s. Mm -hmm. And then you have the super 20s. So that's all a tier, all the way down in the age group. Mm -hmm. Now, the super 20s is as low as you go. Then you start hitting the youth, uh, high-level mm -hmm. elite teams, uh, like the Deltona Youth Soccer Club. Mm -hmm. They play in the regular Greater Central Florida League. And so they, their travel teams will travel maybe to Apopka, maybe to Ormond okay. Beach and all. And these teams travel all over the state to play. Then you mm -hmm. have other professional leagues you have, we the united soccer league mm -hmm. then you have the national adult soccer league which some people may have heard of uh, fort lauderdale strikers the yes. tampa bay rowdies right this is like the tier one mm -hmm. or the, of the minor league of soccer mm -hmm. like baseball and then you have another tier down so you got this adult mm -hmm. national adult soccer league you got united soccer league mm -hmm. These are all same tiers, and then they have tiers coming down from them at different ages. And then you have the National Premier Soccer League, which has a Florida conference. Mm -hmm. In the men's Florida conference, there's six teams right now. Mm -hmm. I think four in Miami. The Orlando Craze just entered. Uh, Jacksonville United. Mm -hmm. So they travel within the state. Maybe the top team wins the Florida conference. Mm -hmm. during. Now they play during the summer, May, June, and July. So that college kids can play, kids out of high school can play, whoever makes the team. Yeah. They'll play within the Florida Conference. And by the end of July, if they're the top team, maybe the top second team, depending on the, the national structure, mm -hmm. they may go then play in the region, mm -hmm. maybe from Tennessee to Alabama. And all them state conferences mm -hmm. will play a regional. The top team there or mm -hmm. two will then will play in the national finals mm -hmm. wherever that may be against maybe some teams from Washington State or California yeah. or Texas mm -hmm. and so they get seen by all the college not mm -hmm. just college coaches but mm -hmm. the professional coaches from Major League Soccer mm -hmm. go visit these teams and scout for mm -hmm. players they may want to move up to Major League Soccer and then all the Major League Soccer teams have a team that's in playing like at a pro level United States the, under the United Soccer League, mm -hmm. they'll have a pro level team. Okay, so, so there's many avenues yeah. for people to go up. So, like, say somebody's playing here and on the adult so the Delta Adult Soccer League, they have an opportunity by playing in the right divisions that they could eventually work their way up to almost a professional status. 
if they right yeah I mean, but not through mm-hmm. us since we're mm-hmm. a recreational league mm-hmm. we have two divisions in most nights we have an a division mm-hmm. and b division so our b division mostly where the house team is like mm-hmm. i said we'll put individuals together just moved here and they'll play mm-hmm. and the other teams are just out there to have fun mm-hmm. you know whether they win or lose our a division I try to keep them separated because yeah. our A division is our teams that have played with us maybe for many years. Mm-hmm. They've won a couple of our championships. Mm-hmm. So our top team for the summer wins a championship. Mm-hmm. They're going to play in the A division in the winter if they come back or next summer because we don't want a house team or some other team. You just got together 80 of your buddies to come play mm-hmm. and you lose every game because you're playing last year's champion. Yeah. So we don't allow that. Mm-hmm. We keep them separated so everyone has fun. So A team is going to play another A team that mm-hmm. is comparable skills, you know, especially in the in the men's division you get uh, you know eight your college buddies and you mm-hmm. all went to the same college and played on the college soccer team, you know, and then you're going to play eight kids that just graduated high school. Yeah. Uh, if we put a team together, let's say, to go play in the Central Florida League, mm-hmm. where they have up to 80, 85 teams, and that's different divisions. You have yeah. men's divisions, just like we do, co-ed. You have a women's division. You have over 30s, over 40s divisions, mm-hmm. and they play all over Central Florida, you know, Seminole, Sanford. Mm-hmm. Sanford's building a new complex because it's growing so much. You know, Orlando City's building another stadium. There, Ormond Beach has a complex. Uh, New Smyrna mm-hmm. Beach has a nice complex over there. Uh, there's Sperling Park, which is mm-hmm. one of the oldest parks around Dillion Springs. Mm-hmm. Uh, the critical thing in Florida is having lights at these different complexes yeah. because half your year is played in the dark. It mm-hmm. gets dark at 7 o'clock come the winter, and that's when your first season is from August on. It gets dark. You have to have lights to practice under yeah. You have to have lights for your, for games if they're played at night. Most youth are played during the day. Most the Central Florida mm-hmm. League teams play during the day. But again, the Central Florida League is basically a big recreation league. Mm-hmm. Only they do 11 a side instead of 6 a side. Mm-hmm. And they play up to win the championship within their divisions. Mm-hmm. And then there's nowhere to go okay. unless you go try out for a professional team mm-hmm. like the Orlando Craze, Orlando Crush is the women's. Yeah. In the one tier group mm-hmm. the Orlando Craze is in, like I said, there's six men's teams in mm-hmm. Florida. Women are growing much faster because in the women's professional level of that mm-hmm. uh, soccer in the Florida conference, there's 10 women's teams. Well, one of the things I wanted to uh, ask you because you touched on it and it's women's soccer. And this is something that people have asked, how come, you know, soccer has grown so exponentially as far as popularity. Uh, is it because now there's a sport that when young kids get involved with it, now it's open not just to little boys, but it's open to little girls? I mean, it's Absolutely. Mostly, like I said, you'll start your kids at soccer at mm-hmm. four years or five years old. And they'll play co-ed because not enough girls come out. Yeah. So they'll play co-ed teams till they're about under 10 Mm -hmm. and then it's mostly boys and lots of girls fall out and go into gymnastics Mm -hmm. or dance which is all right believe it or not a lot of them do all that and play soccer yeah we have soccer players that play football Mm -hmm. we have soccer players that play baseball they do all the sports Mm -hmm. god bless them for their energy (laughs) there and so the girls uh once they get to u10 Mm -hmm. under 10 under 12 then they usually enough girls stay around they'll create the whole team for girls Mm -hmm. And the girls are exploding, as I said, at even a, the national fourth level yeah. is uh, there's more teams in Florida than there is men's teams mm-hmm. for women. The adult soccer league with your divisions, they play at Dewey Boster. There's actually nine fields out there. Okay, nine fields. Nine fields. And uh, they converted one of them, moved the lights in. Mm-hmm. You can still put a soccer field on it, so full size, mm-hmm. 120 by 80 wide. And there's about seven fields out there, and all nine fields are lit. Mm -hmm. The other two fields are a little smaller. You'd play U12s or younger age group to to mark the fields Mm -hmm. because we made room for bathrooms and playground, and so them two fields are encroached a little upon. You can't put a full-size field on them. So there's actually nine fields. Now, in six aside, on one full-size regulation field, we mark two fields to play. Mm -hmm. 
because we use a smaller field. And we rotate our games around the field too. So everybody come out here the first two weeks and we'll play on field number five. Mm -hmm. And then the next two weeks we'll be down on seven or eight. And the people say, oh, we got to drive around here now and park. Mm -hmm. And then two weeks later, we'll be over here because we want to protect the grass. We don't right. want to play on the same mm -hmm. field all week they or all rotate. two months. Mm -hmm. So we rot rotate around the complex. Okay. Uh, very quickly before we run out of time, I wanted to, because this is important, if people want to find out about how do they join the Adult Soccer League, you know, what's, uh, you have a website, you have contact information, uh, tell me what that is, and we'll be putting up a graphic so people can see yes. it as well. We have a website, hasn't changed in mm -hmm. 15 years, it's basically Deltona 6v6, and it's the number 6, not mm -hmm. spelled out, Right. very simple, dot com. We also have a Facebook page, which is, you type in Deltona Adult Soccer League, mm -hmm. and it's our Facebook page. And on the Facebook page and on our website, our phone number is there, mm -hmm. you can call direct and always talk to a person. 99% of the time you'll get me okay. if necessary or one of mm -hmm. my staff. Now answer all your mm -hmm. questions. All the rules are on the website. Oh, okay, yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Uh, basically, we play by FIFA rules mm -hmm. other than one or two because we're not on a bigger field. We don't get 10 yards from the ball. We get right. five yards from the ball. Uh, we do play with a size five mm -hmm. because that's what adults play with. Mm -hmm. And the goals are a little smaller. And we try to keep the game moving. We mm -hmm. use... All our referees are United States Soccer Federation certified referees. Uh, I make sure they've done high school yeah. because they get more training when mm -hmm. they're a part of the high school organization. So these referees have done high school games. Most of them have done college games. Mm -hmm. Most of them all do the Central Florida 11 aside league. So they're all very experienced. We have one referee comes in every either summer or winter, depending on when the U.S. grants his visa, coming <laughs> from England. He's an English ref. Yeah. And has been refing with us many years. So it's, it's just like the players from mm -hmm. all different occupations. We have referees from all different occupations. It was an eight week season. We okay. do eight, eight games guaranteed. Uh, we issue everybody a uniform shirt so mm -hmm. people don't have to worry about. We have everybody sign up uh, individually mm -hmm. so you don't have to run around and collect money from your teammates. Yeah. You just tell them, here's my. 10 people mm -hmm. and give us a team name and start having your people sign up. They can sign up online. Uh, they can mail in a check or come over to our offices in person. Well, Charlie, this has been, like I said, a, a lot of information, a lot of good information about soccer in Deltona. I want to thank everybody for watching. This is Turf Courts and Celebrations. Thank you again, Charlie. Thank you for having me.